Hey guys, the FM Gaff here, and welcome to part one of my Portugal series here in Euro 2016 Big Seven in the Euro 2016 Big Seven series. Now, I have actually uh, recorded the entire episode right now, uh, but the first bit, uh, the first like little clip, has gone missing. I don't know where it's gone. I must have deleted it or something. But yeah, basically, it's just me going through like saying all the names of the 22, 23 players, and then I realised there were 22 and realise one was missing, which you will now find out about. It's just, it re it starts in a really weird way. It basically, I've, I've forgotten, because uh, Cedric was injured when I did the whole squad thing, so I didn't actually put him in. So I'm now realising that in the next clip, and then the episode will go forward from there. So, yeah, hope you guys enjoy. Alright, the extra player was Cedric, and I realised why I didn't call him up, because I tried to last time, and he's currently injured, so I couldn't uh, call him up. Uh, so he's out for three to four weeks and therefore is unlikely to play in the friendly that's coming up in uh, in about a month's time against Holland. So at about a month's time maybe. Uh, but yeah, so it looks like we're stuck with 22. But um, yeah, so this plus Cedric is the squad. Uh, we've got Rui Patricio as the goalkeeper. Anthony Lopez who uh, plays for Leon. Uh, the only bit I know about him is simply because he got a team of season ca uh, card on FIFA. Um, uh, they've got, in terms of defenders, they've got quite a lot of centre-backs and not a lot in the way of full-backs. So, um, yeah, as you can see, there's only Ellis Sue at left-back and then the right-back is Villarinha, essentially, who is by no means a right-back at all. I mean, I definitely wouldn't say that he is. Uh, so, uh, although we have got Cedric, haven't we? Isn't Cedric a right-back? Hang on, let's check this. Uh, I was just on him, so it would have been handy to check then. Yeah, he is a right-back, so maybe... I think, yeah, I think I'm definitely going to do a formation with four at the back. Um, and then, yeah, I think I think, I think think I should do at least an extra attack to him. That probably will become my primary one and just play uh, him there and then have uh, Villarinha as the backup. And we can play either LSU or Guerrero, Guerrero <laughs> uh, left back. But, yeah, anyway, this is the sort of tactic that I initially created without him. Uh, it's got Rube to show his goal in goal, as I said. Three centre backs, um, Pepe, and uh, Pepe is definitely likely to start. Fonte uh, had a little bit of some fitness issues, so he wasn't actually in the quick pick when I quick picked it. Uh, but I put him in for Carvalho, I think it was, in the end. William Carvalho uh, is a fantastic player. O can only play defensive mid, so I really want to get defensive mid in the tactic. Uh, Andre Gomez is a decent player, plays in the Liga BVA. Adrian is a good central midfielder, very all round I thought, and he's got good penalty taking if it comes to that, so um, I thought that would be good. Jao Mario is another solid player, um, I think he also got a team this season actually, um, he's got really good passing and technique which is uh, really good, also fairly young but that doesn't really matter in this save. Put my wingers on attack, Villarinha, love, I love playing with him, I just remember this one goal he scored against Wolfsburg, they got me really into the Bundesliga. Uh, sorry, for Wolfsburg in like a five. I swear it was like a five-three win. I can't remember what, but it was just this like amazing volley from the edge of the box. Um, put in the comments if you remember that. I doubt anyone will, but yeah. And Nani, obviously, on the other side, we've got Charisma who can come in uh, in this sort of area, and um, Mutini obviously can play in midfield as well. Mutini probably will. He's just currently injured. Rafa can also play on the left wing. Dino Pereira again, another good, really good midfielder. And I was thinking, oh, and Sanchez, Renato Sanchez, obviously. I think he's time for Bayern Munich in real life, but yeah, he's had a hell of a season for Benfica. I don't know if he was like, buffed in the winter update. Also, another option, is, of course, is to play Cristiano Ronaldo out there. I've got him on the inside forward if we do need him, and then we can play Adair up front um, if necessary. So yeah, we've got lots of options, and um, yeah, I'm quite happy to take this forward. So if we look at our expectations, which I obviously forgot to do with England last time, which I think was the quarterfinal last time, uh, is to reach the quarterfinal again. So that is our expectations. That is the group that we've been drawn in. Poland, Romania and Spain. I know Romania and Spain are certainly qualified um, uh, for the main. And I think Poland have too. So all three of these teams are actually people that have qualified for the European Championship, yeah, ch Championships. <laughs> championships. Uh, don't know why I said that weirdly. But yeah. Also, Wales, oh, England and Scotland are in the same group. And uh, Wales in with Germany and, the, and Russia and Ukraine. So that would be a tricky one. But yeah, these are the groups. Uh, for this specific tournament if you want to pause quickly and have a look but yeah i'm now going to skip forward to the start of the euros so uh we're going to play this on friendly and i will join you maybe before the polling game i think it would be a little bit more efficient to do that because last time i joined you actually no I'll, I'll join you at the squad registration announcement and then we'll go on so um yeah I'll see you guys in a sec all right guys you join me 
before the Poland game in this Portugal little tournament. I know I said I was going to come back from the squad amount announcement, but I think I'm only going to do that where in which there is a decision to make with the Portuguese squad. It was just 23 players, so it was, it, it was obviously a no-brainer. We take the same 23 players uh, that have been chosen in real life. So let's have a look at the friendlies that have occurred. First of all, in March we had a really good 3-1 win against Holland, both in this game and this. Uh, actually, no, I think it was only in this game. Uh, I played the three at the back formation for the second half, and uh, I played this formation for the well, okay, the first half up until about the 60th minute actually, and then the rest of the other games, the the other two games, I played this the, uh, throughout. So yeah, this is the formation. It's just a Sam four one two three. It's basically the same as the other one, except one of the midfielders dropped back um, to the defence, and obviously there's four at the back. Uh, I haven't put any instructions on uh, as yet, and I don't think I'm going to unless something particularly crops up within the matches. Um, so yeah, this is probably going to be, uh, this is what well, I've chosen this as the starting team for the opening game against Poland. So, let's get into this Holland game. Um, as you can see, these are the, that's the team that I played, actually, it'd be better to go in here. This is the team, the starting 11 up to 11 that I played with Ronaldo up front. He did actually get injured in this for about a month, I think it was, but it didn't matter because it was quite a long time until the next game. So let's just take a look at these goals in 3D. Nani managing to grab himself at two very early on. So um, this is the first one, it came sort of from kickoff. We won it there. Ronaldo played out to Charisma. He got it to the back post and there was Nani to tap it in and make it 1-0. Nani did get his second of the match just uh, a couple of minutes later in the ninth minute. As you'll see here, Patricio, um, well, I guess it started from the keeper. He played it all the way up. Um, Jan Matt headed it down to Sanchez. It eventually came back to the Dutch and um, they got it forward. But yeah, eventually we come back. Charisma plays it out to Nani and he just absolutely bangs it from the edge of the box into the bottom right corner. Very good finish. And uh, yeah, we looked good then. I was looking, I, I thought we could go on to make it like 4 or 5 nil. But then this happened. Memphis did well on the left, made Patricio spell it, and Robin had a tap in uh, in the 50 minutes to make it 2 1. And then this was the final goal of the game. Rafa, a lovely one too between Edda and Rafa. I think he actually might play for the same club. I think Edda plays for Braga. I know Rafa certainly does, and uh, Edda put it away for the three-one win. I am not going to check that. Although I think, yeah, I think he went to Swansea. Yeah, he's on loan from Swansea at Losk. So yeah, he did used to play for Braga. So they have got their uh, their sort of connection, but um, it was a couple of years ago now. And yeah, Edda producing a nice finish. So this is going to be. Uh, oh wait, wait, I was going to. I was just about to start on the team, but I haven't gone through the other two friendlies, of course, um, which have just occurred. Uh, so first of all, I can't click. Um, first of all, we played Slovenia, and you'd expect this to be a nice victory. Oh, and of course, the one thing that I haven't actually mentioned so far is Daniel Caruso, who actually scores this opening goal, as you see there, Rafa, uh, whipping it in, Caruso at the back post. He got the goal. Now, Caruso isn't in the Portuguese squad, but we have had one injury, well, one tournament-ending injury, but quite a few, actually, injuries um, beforehand. And I think Ran Ronaldo was injured up until the last uh, game for a cold or something, and Viren, yeah, there you go, getting the second. But yeah, Daniel Caruso has come in for Bruno Alves, who got injured, the Fenerbahce centre-back. Um, I could have gone with Bernardo Silva, uh, just because I thought he would have been a better player, but I wanted to sort of do it with the with the um, player that got injured, and also we sort of needed a centre-back if he did get injured. So um, that was, uh, Caruso was the choice. In the next game, unfortunately, we did lose this one against Germany. Second half goals from Muller and Gertz. Uh, we played pretty well. We sort of matched them fairly well, but in the end, they were Germany. Their domination shone through, and um, in the end, they probably beat us quite convincingly. So uh, this was Muller's goal, I think. Royce and Mustafi playing it around no end, and eventually the ball in got blocked into the path of Muller, and uh, Muller stuck it home. And then the second goal was very late on. I'd gone attacking at this point, trying to force the issue. And they played it quite nicely. Kidera into Goethe, and that is a fantastic finish from Goethe to make it 2-0. So, Poland, Romania and Spain stand between us in a place in the in round two. Spain obviously will be a tricky game. We've got them last. And Poland are the only game for today's episode, part, whatever you want to call it. This is going to be the team. We've got Rui Patricio in goal. Cedric playing right back. We've got uh, Daniel Carrizzo and Pepe as the two centre-backs. Elisu playing left back, Carvalho will be sitting in that defensive mid role, Moutinho and Adrienne will be occupying the two midfield roles with Charisma on the left, Fiorinha on the right and Ronaldo up front, bench of Lopez, Danilo, uh, João Mario, I, I don't know how to say João, uh, 
someone Portuguese tell me how to say that. Ed um, Guerrero, Gomez, Nani, Fonte, Sanchez, Eduardo, Carvalho, and Rafa on the bench. I'm just going to put the goalkeeper there because I just don't like when that happens. Uh, I, I thought that was an injury. But yeah, anyway, let's submit the team. We're at the Stade de Lumières, which I know is in Lyon now from my uh, <laughs> from my uh, England exploits. And we are favourites for this game against Poland. Obviously, standout player for Poland is going to be Lewandowski, but Blazikowski, obviously, former Borussia Dortmund man, I think plays a Fiorentina now. Glick's pretty de decent. He plays for uh, Torino. Kuchowiak, who plays for Sevilla. It's not bad. And Piszczek, who's still at Dortmund. Not a bad player. And Fabianski obviously has roots in the Premier League. Milik is a decent striker who can come on and play for Ajax. Rybus, I vaguely recognise, as I do Grzycki as well. Um, so yeah, they have a decent uh, number of players. I'm surprised that Szczesny doesn't start ahead of uh, Fabianski. But yeah, anyway, we should be coming away with the victory today. So let's hope that happens. Obviously, yeah, a lot of instructions on Lewandowski there, and then another one on Carol Linetti. Uh, so uh, let's get into it, and yeah, hopefully we can come away with a win in this opening game. I've got it on 3D, which uh, I shouldn't have. Whoopsie daisy, didn't mean to do that. So let's put it in 2D Classic, and let's put that on TV for the goals. So here we go, back to 2D Classic, and yeah. <laughs> Start of the year, I guess. So Ronaldo, um, we, we, oh Ronaldo. Okay, well Vieira just played up to Ronaldo. He managed to make something, even though he's really uh, out on the right wing. He's quite isolated, but he managed to get past it. Now a couple of shots on goal, uh, but he couldn't force it home. I think Ronaldo probably is best in his current striker role because, uh, as you saw, he was on the wing when he played uh, England us uh, in the quarter final last time out and uh, he was just yeah he we it might have been our fantastic defensive skills which I'm sure it was but he was um, a little bit ineffective as Lewandowski had an opportunity there and well I normally I'd be saying like a better striker would have hit would have scored that but he is pretty much the best striker in the world arguably obviously Suarez would uh, take a claim for that and uh, you could argue Ronaldo Messi etc are strikers but yeah Blazikowski Adrian gets that away Charisma finds LSU who finds Willian, who finds Adrian Silva, Charisma finds Joao Moutinho, who looks for Villarinha, Villarinha finds Adrian, Ronaldo, Ronaldo hits one, and that wasn't far away, unfortunately, just going over the crossbar, Charisma now whipping in a free kick, Ronaldo, and there we go, we take the lead half an hour in, Cristiano Ronaldo gets his goal, lovely ball in from Ricardo Charisma, the, is he still a Besiktas, the Besiktas man? And uh, Ronaldo on the sort of half volley, placing in the bottom left corner. Romania are actually, or they've beaten Spain. Wow, okay, let's just have a quick look at this little side. Yeah, they beat Spain, an 88th minute winner. Wow, okay, that throws the rope right open. Okay, Blazikowski now, balling Charisma away. João Moutinho finds Ronaldo. Ronaldo, can you find that man right on the right hand side? He does, Villarinha. Okay, out to Cedric. Cedric hits the shot, Fabianski with the save. Nice play on that. Uh, right wing after Ronaldo found uh, Villarinha. Adrian Silva now with this shot. That's uh, not troubling the uh, Fabianski in the Poland goal. Kresma's looking a little bit tired so he'll probably have to be off first but we're not going to make any changes just yet and we're just going to go with some Eye of Faith. So it doesn't look like it's going to work. Try and mix up the uh, way in which you say it to see if that happens but no no particularly good reactions uh, from the individual team talks but we did get those two good ones from uh, the assistant managers overall team talks so Villarinha now into Moutinho Krichowiak, uh gets that way but Willian finds Adrian Silva and Krichowiak goes in on uh, Silva there but it's just a foul no card at all Lewandowski is now clear on this left wing and he manages to come inside and on his third go Lewandowski has equalised for Poland they are back level here and that was poor how we let him well, first of all, Cedric, who got beaten way too easily by him, and then how he let him have three shots on goal. He really should have scored the second one. What a save, that second save from Patricio, but unfortunately he was still there to just tap home. And there we go, one all. We are... That's just really annoying. Hopefully we can uh, regain the momentum. That was just after half-time as well, so this um, it'll be diff difficult to do that. I think I, actually I'm going to... Well, okay, I can't change the team talk. That was a mistake. I want to sort of get creative. Then we'll make our first couple of substitutions, and I think Charisma is going to make way for uh, Rafa. Yeah, it's going to be Rafa, and then possibly bring Nani here. Yeah, I think I will bring Nani there. Put Fiorini back at right back because Cedric um, was poor 
for that first goal and we'll put him on a complete wing back because he is um, basically a right winger. Uh, and any other change we need to particularly make so far, Ronaldo probably I want to save him if we're winning, but I'll probably leave him on, obviously, if we're not. But yeah, uh, we are going to just leave it with the two substitutes for now as Matishiak, uh gets a yellow card. Uh, and uh, we now make those substitutions, those both those winger changes. So Kriyash Shawiak play picking up a yellow card here, and could this be... Oh, Silva, Ronaldo, nice play from the free kick into Silva. Silva played it through quite quickly to Ronaldo. Ronaldo perhaps could have given us uh, the lead again. Pepe trying to get that back in, but it's cleared away. And there you go, end of highlight. That was a good opportunity, and we are really forcing the issue now. I kind of want to... I think I'm just going to push up and then increase the tempo, though it went... Eight minutes went past as I was doing that, so that was... Probably a pause moment as Poland have a chance at Bowenish with the header, almost giving Poland perhaps a winner, and they could still get it here as Bowenish finds Krzyzewiak, Olkowski, Zielinski, Matuszczyk, uh, Krzyzewiak, Matuszczyk, Zielinski, Lewandowski, Mirjuski, and uh, William Carvalho does well. Rafa can now run at the Poland defence. Finds Adrian Silva. Can he find Villarinha this side? He can. Gets it, Ronaldo! Fabianski with the save. I thought that was going to be the late winner that we des that we really, really probably deserved. And Ronaldo just couldn't get it home. Moutinho. Now, Carrico. Just wide. Carrico, I think that is because of the little thing on the seat. Uh, new highlight now. Zielinski finds Mirzajewski. Zielinski. What we definitely don't want is Poland getting a winner now. Krzyzewiak, Thiago Cienek, Virio Reynio wins it. Nani finds Ronaldo over the top. Ronaldo, we know he can do something special. And his shot was served by Fabianski. And Rafa couldn't put away the rebound. I'm going to go attacking, but it's not going to make any difference. And, yeah, the game's going to finish one all. That is very disappointing. Not a great start, but we'll probably still get through from the group. It's just um, not a great signal that we've just drawn our opening game but there you go one all Ronaldo giving us the lead Lewandowski getting the equaliser and we we only draw against Poland this means that we'll need to hopefully get a win against uh, Romania because uh, the Spain game will be diff difficult so yeah I'll see you next uh, episode or part for the Romania and Spain games hope you guys have enjoyed this ep episode uh, or part <laughs> keep saying episode or part anyway if you have drop a like if you have any questions, put them in the comment section. And if you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. I've been the FM Gaffer, and I'll see you guys next time.